Hello everyone. Today I'm so excited because we're going to be talking about my tarot deck. <laughs> and this is not published, I haven't done anything with this, but I went through the whole process of making a tarot deck. And I did it as a learning tool. And I'm going to go through the cards with you, why I chose some of the images, not every card, but I love using my own deck. And as a creator, as someone that paints and that draws regularly, um, I really did like the art project, uh, like the art projectness of it. And I did it in a way that could really teach me like why, like really soul search why I would choose a certain image, why would I do this, why would I do that. And I did it as like a, let's get to know the tarot I like to think of tarot outside the box, right? And so that's what I did. And I think, I think that uh, some of the Im images that I've chosen will now looking back, um, they kind of correlate with other decks that are out there on the market actually. Like I said, this is not on the market, people. I have this handy dandy, this beautiful, I drew this on the front this never-ending tarot thing. I mean, this is like thick, but I made an oracle deck as well. Um, but that's not what this, that's not what today is about. So I've got my oracle deck in there. Okay. It's beautiful. I made it gilded, right? I actually did not like how this particular printing company did the gilding. Um, it's not like the good quality gilding. Uh, I don't like that it kind of comes off on your hand. I don't, I don't like that. And this really kind of taught me about the logistics of printing your own deck as well and how complicated it can be and how you have to get the images just so, uh, or else it just doesn't work with the overall feel of the deck. Um, and then the text, what kind of font, uh, the size of the font, because you have to really, yeah, I had to do every card font by hand and that was tedious. Um, I think overall this took me the images and then the logistics of making it and then actually printing it, everything I think took me about a year. So this was a pretty in-depth project for me. I even named it. So I went through the whole process of this. Um, I made it through makeplaincards.com. Uh, it's a great company like they're kind of like Game Crafter in a way, but that was the what that was the company that I chose to print because I wasn't actually doing this for anything but myself, and I knew that I wanted like this uh, linen finish. That was. It's kind of like the Llewellyn um, cardstock. If anyone's familiar with that, it's bendy um, because I'm a riffler shuffler, and I mean that in the most destructive way possible. Okay. Like, I do this, okay, do this, and then I bend it to hell, okay. Pretty severe with my decks when it comes to that, even the good ones that I shouldn't be. So, I went through the whole process, and I'll show you some of the images, and some of the images are, I did want to just do bare bones with, and then some of them I really thought about, and I was like, I really want this so-and-so in there. Now, I'll tell you what style I went with. I went with pre Raphaelite. Um, that it happens to be when I want a healing image or if I really am down and I really want to, I want to get creative, but I want some inspiration or if I want inspiration in other aspects of my life, I really tend to go towards the, you know, the Malays and the Rosettis. And I just, I love shuffling this deck. The cardstock is perfect. Like, wait, I chose pre Raphaelite because I wanted the images to be healing. I wanted them, I wanted my brain to just stop, like, with the, like, why did they put a, you know, kind of like you do with the Thoth deck. You kind of like, why did he put a goat there? And then you really have to go into research with that. What does that symbol mean? You know, like, what is the egg and the serpent? Like, you really have to dive with decks like that, especially when symbolism is pretty heavy. But I wanted to just say, okay, 
this is my thought patterning on the three of wands. This image looks like the three of wands. Now I will say that I based this off, some of the images do look very Rider Waite Smith. Um, so I did want to disclose that right at the beginning that some of the images that I did automatically associate like the pre-Raphaelite paintings with a specific card, it did tend to go the Rider Waite way, which is kind of like weird because I'm a Thoth girl. <laughs> okay, I wanted to come hands way. I wanted to turn the camera around because I didn't feel like my camera was going to focus on these cards for you. Now, um, I've got the whole deck up here, but I'm not going to show you the whole deck. Like I said, this is not published or anything. Um, this was just for me. So I feel like I don't, you know, I don't have to show you all the cards. I just wanted you to get a feel for them. And I've got a few from each suit. I did this, just this, I just did this to organize my own thoughts, not for any other reason. <laughs> um, so I've got them all like organized by suit because we're going to kind of go over these are kind of like my favorite and then a little bit about why I chose them and I think I said this before but I kind of tended to go right or wait with this which is kind of a coincidence because I could have really dived with art in a way that would go along with like my thought love but for some reason the pre raphaelites lights I was or Renaissance art in general, I was really able to find images that I really thought, cor you know, correlated with the writer weight meanings and images themselves. So, uh, just a disclaimer right now, there is artful nudity in this deck, uh, because as a creator, as an artist, I believe in that. <laughs> so click off if you do not want to see any nudity. Okay. All right. Now this is the, this is the majors. Okay. And I'll give you a close up a little bit of the gilding here. And it does come off on my hands. Maybe that first time it doesn't really come off anymore, but I've had it for years and it's still pretty shiny. So, but if I had to like, if I marketed this, I would take the gilding off just because I don't like that of this Renaissance rose. I love it. I'm pretty sure like, in candlelight in this church it would just be beautiful anyway um and i want to show you the full i want to show you the full and the world uh and kind of show you why i did what i did okay so here's the full she's so beautiful i loved her pose because she was so open which to me meant and she's not carrying her garment so it kind of meant to me that She's open in a naive way. She doesn't have any life experience to know, to know enough to cover herself up or when to. And it's a very important to know all those. So she doesn't have that sense. But because I kind of think of the majors in a, in a way as like a fool's journey, then the world card needed to kind of make me think of her. And she's gained the knowledge and gained the common sense, so to speak. And so I kind of wanted the world to kind of look like her, but in a more, I've learned a lot from being like this. And so I'm going to switch to the back here. And this is the world card. And I love that it does kind of look like the same lady. I can't remember if it's the same artist. Um, it's in my guidebook somewhere. But she's still open, right? She's still really open. Her arms are out, but she's got this garment on now. She's wrapping it around her almost like she knows better. And she's like, okay, I'm open right now. I'm receiving, but it's, this is really close by. I'm holding it. If I need to shield myself, I can. I've learned a lot from just being open with nothing. And so that's kind of why I chose those two images as a, like, kind of, kind of like they're the same person. Uh, I thought that that was a really interesting way to, to do that. Okay. Now I believe that this is, I think this is Medea. Uh, Medea, Medea, <laughs> a, a, a priestess in her own right. She's a priestess of Hecate. And I love the story of Medea. Just, oh, I'm so fascinated by her. And so, is that showing up? 
yeah, it's showing up. But look at, like, you can tell that these fabrics being painted, there is so much going on with this card and how she's actually doing a spell. I thought, oh, yes, that's a magician. <laughs> and then, of course, if y'all been following along with me at all, y'all know I picked the Pythia. The Pythia Oracle of, of uh, at Delphi. You know, the Temple of Apollo. I had to pick her. I love this rendition of her. Um, and like I said previously, I think some of these cards are actually, or some of these images are used in decks that are on the market um, or have been on the market. But five years ago when I made this, I didn't have a clue who was making decks and who wasn't. <laughs> but I love that she's carrying this laurel, right? But you can actually see the vapors at the bottom of the card or in this case, the bottom of the painting. And like her eyes are even like whited out, like she's like she's blind, right? But in a, in a prophecy way. So I thought that was fascinating. Okay, now this is my Wheel of Fortune card. I very much think of this card as a destiny slash fate card. And I wanted, I always knew I wanted a tarot deck that had the Morai sisters as the Wheel of Fortune. Because I do believe that there is a thing, some such thing as like kind of fate, but then we can map it out. Like it doesn't all belong to them. That we have choices. It's kind of like when you go to a future fortune teller and they say, well, you've changed your mind about this, you've changed your mind about that. So I can't really read past a certain point because you could potentially change your mind. And that's kind of how I think of allowing the push and pull of the wheel to go. And this kind of just represents that in a more like broad way. So now for my strength card. Now we know that this is like a lion getting his mouth pried open, right? Um, she's standing there all regal. But to me, it's about all of your primal urges, all <clears throat> all of your primal feelings, your instincts, right? And that may come from not just a fire animal like the lion is, but it could come from a wolf, right? The wild wolf. Uh, think women who run with the wolves. You think birds, right? That go in flight. All kind of elemental animals. And I think I wanted a card that really embodied that. And so when I saw this image, she has the wolves, she has birds jaguars and lions and she's just her posture with this is so you know whatever I want to embody right now I'm going to and I loved that about this and it just really called to me on what strength means to me like some of them down here are like really low like almost in reverence of her and then some of them have like her skirt in like a playful way. So I felt like these were all of her primal instincts and urges. And she's allowing it to come with her posture being like this. So now the next is the devil. Okay. I was going to show you my death card because uh, as you can see by all the jewelry and stuff I wear, um, I'm obsessed with the Momentum Mor Moriad. But I wanted to show you the devil because she reminded me so much of me. And it's a picture of, it's a painting of Lilith. And the way I think of the devil, I kind of think of it like the chains. I really like to see the chains on the Rider Waite deck with the people having the chains, but they can take them off any time. It's more or less, you know, you're chained down by something. Uh, could be something mental, could be something physical, no longer serving you, right? And it's, but it has to come from you, whether or not you're going to give that up. So when I saw this image and as you can see from this text, I've had to go back and really tweak all of the fonts <laughs> because some of them were too big. Some of them were too small and I had to do the whole thing by hand. And so making the deck, making a deck and going through the entire process is really tedious, um, but extremely like worthwhile. I know that that's kind of cliche to say, but <laughs> It was pretty, like, when I got the deck, I was like, oh, my God, I made this. So, anyway, when I saw this picture of Lilith and how the snake is wrapped around her, I thought, oh, my God, that's exactly what the devil is. And not to mention that my hair, that's exactly what my hair looks like, if anyone wants to know. 
if you haven't watched any of my other videos. <laughs> so when I saw that, and she's kind of laying on the snake like, you know, not like Eve who was scared of it, but Lilith is almost like embracing the dark side of her, you know, and the good. And that was what was so badass about her in her story <laughs> that I think that this is a way of saying that she's embracing the good and the bad. And I love that. Now, again, like the fool and the world card, I did the sun and the moon in a sense of duality as well. Because when I saw this picture of Apollo and this painting of Artemis, like brother and sister aspect, and they both kind of tied in together, painting speaking, I was like, yes. So these are it. And like they both have bows. They both have like one's got the moon and the sun and they both are wearing them as halos. I thought this is ingenious. This is what the sun and the moon is about. It's about embodying the illusion, right? And like I sometimes when I work, how I work with the moon, it's kind of witchy, right? So when I get the moon card, it's kind of means subconscious, illusionment, right? Getting through the depths and the shadows. And she hasn't even pulled her arrow out yet. So I feel like it's about the work that we do in the shadow. And then he, Apollo, as the sun, he's blasting, right? But he's going to be constantly blasting. There's no illusion in this card. He's blasting you with his light because that's all he does. He's just a steady flow of energy. And they just match so well that I had to put them in there as kind of like a brother-sister aspect. And I love that. And the last major I want to show you is the tower card. And when I saw this particular image, it was actually way bigger in like, there's way more to this painting. <laughs> if you were to like know the painting and look it up there, it it's, there's so much more than just this card, but I really zoomed in and cropped in a way that would really get the tower aspect of it. And I thought that it was such a good image for the tower. And this painting is actually of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And these two people right here are leaving this destruction, right? So they're not falling, but I thought that this was where we want to be. We're walking away from the destruction, turning a new, you know, basically it's like getting a new perspective, but in a, you cannot help but to do that because it's going to come no matter what. And this one lightning strike here that's beautifully painted in was just ingenious. And I thought, oh my God, if that's not the tower, I don't know what is. So this beautiful rendition of the Sodom and Gomorrah destruction is, was and is, uh, was and is what I think of the tower. So, okay. Now I'm going to pick one up at random. I have, like I said, this, these aren't organized. I just did it by suit so that I would be organized in my thoughts. Okay. I don't even know if they're put in order. I mean, this is, this is only three. Okay. These are the pentacles. Now with the six of pentacles, I kind of think of the six of pentacles in a, this is what happens after the fives. So it's like, you know, you think you're desolate, but you're still in a place where you can get help and gain from the help. You're not completely you know, you're not completely lost. Um, so it is about the generosity aspect of it, but it's about these people were the people in the fives and they're asking for help. So you're still at a point where your pride hasn't gotten away, but you need to take advantage of the help that you can get so that you won't get, go any farther down that path. And so when I saw this image, I was like, did they use this image as a reference? <laughs> I was like, wow. So we'll go through pretty quick with these. Uh, I didn't know how many cards I have for each one, but now look at this nine of pentacles. I loved how her back was turned in this because it cemented the fact that she's so content in her garden that she doesn't really have to be standing there, you know, all graceful. She's still able to kind of do the work that's involved and because she likes doing it. Right. She is so content because she's still able to get out there and be happy with what she's cultivated and cultivating, you know, in a presence sense. And so I loved that her back was turned because it just made me think, 
she's still doing it. She's still out there planting flowers. She's got seeds, you know, come. She's got seeds uh, in her cart for spring. <laughs> so, and then this is like one of my favorite pre raphaelite images. And when I saw this and her smelling the rose, I thought this is the countenance of the queen of pentacles right here. This lady that's just got it going on, you know, on this, the work and the gracefulness of her that just called to me on this queen level that, and not all the queens are as passive as she is. But when I saw this, I was immediately thought of this, this card for just for her, like the passiveness in this, it belonged in the earth and probably no other suit. So, so that's, <clears throat> let me put them over here because I didn't put them over here. Then this, I actually have a couple with this one. Ooh, this is the cups. Are these in order? No. And I did want to, I wasn't going to show you any of the aces. <clears throat> uh, just because they all look, the, almost they all look the same. But I'll show you how I kind of mapped it out. Okay. This is my Ace of Cups. There's not really much to say with this because she's pouring the water out, right? And she just had such a witchy stance that I had to put it in here. <laughs> it was, I mean, there's nothing else I can say with this. It's just, that's what the Ace is to me right there. An overabundance of emotions, the start of everything. This one stream, right? As the one, it just, whew, yeah. Now look at this two of cups. Now, when we think of two of cups, we think of like the connection, right? The connection with someone else, but they're caught in a storm. And I thought that that was such a like great depiction for the two of cups because they're really holding each other. They're really coming in out of the rain and there is an emotional connection with that. Um, there's kind of like a trust issue with that, a uh, trust, a good trusting. <laughs> so thought that was a beautiful image. Now this five of cups is my absolute favorite painting by Millet and it's called Mariana and it's based off of a Shakespeare play measure for measure but I learned about Mariana from a Tennyson poem that I read as a teenager and it's basically about her losing her dowry um, when her dad goes at sea and there's a wreck and her dowry gets thrown overboard and so her fiance leaves her and because, you know, back then you couldn't have, I don't think you could have multiple. Um, according to this measure for measure play, she would have had it to be turned into a nun so that she wouldn't become a burden on her family. And the frustration she feels with this, see, she's like embroidering and her back's killing her. She's like, you know what? I'm sexually frustrated. <laughs> I do not want to be a nun. Her face in this just like cements the fact that she really does not want that lifestyle and she can't there's nothing she can do and that that woe is me that last line of that poem is i wish i was dead and i think god you wish you were dead because your fiance left you but i i don't understand the time right i don't i wasn't living back then so her frustration if that was how bad it was then this really captured that and that's what I think of in the five of cups is that kind of melancholy right so this was a tough one um this eight of cups and I love the name of this it's meet me on the turret stairs and she very much looks like a lady in waiting or um a lady of the court because of how she was dressed and he's just like a simple knight and he you know he wants to meet up with her for some smooches and she's turning away from him in a way that made me think she's really having to think about her emotions whether or not she loves him is this the best thing for me and I thought that that captured the eight of cups so well this ten of cups this beautiful painting right here is called the blind girl and I loved this so much because of the rainbow, but it almost kind of, because it's called the blind girl, I thought, well, she's blind in a way that she's learned all of her lesson, but there's still a happiness there. There's still a contentment there. There's still a sense of family with this little child in her lap, you know, could be 
could be the mother, she could be the mother, she could be the sister, right? And there's just a sense of family. And then this very prosperous land with the rainbows, almost kind of like that. There's a storm coming, but I really got, I really got Ten of Cups vibes for this. So the next is a court card. Now I love this because, um, this is uh, a depiction of, I think this is Medea again, but she's poisoning this chalice for, um, Jason, right? <laughs> you know, he's cheating. She's a woman scorned, right? But look at the detail in the back. I love the detail I was able to get in this image. Like she's seeing them in the background, right? Dancing. And she was like, oh, really? Okay, well, here's your wine, honey. <laughs> and the mountains and the mountains and everything, like with this like beautiful sunset happening and her face, that the sense of emotion on her face is just like exactly what you would think, right? And look at all those books. I don't know if you can see, but <laughs> just, <laughs> she's so witchy. Okay. Let's see. How many do I have with this? What suit is this? Ooh, the wands. I've got some consecutive cards in this one. Okay, let's pull this over here. All right. Now, this two of wands. Now, like... If you think of the Rider Waite, they're going, uh, there's like two wands and he's trying to kind of figure out which path to lead. Kind of like the chariot card, but in a more elemental way. But when I saw this image of these two figures and they're kind of like circling one another, kind of like the yin yang, I was like, and, the, and they've got these torches, right? And I thought, damn, if that's not the two of wands. It's just really powerful. Like they just don't know which way to go, but... He's looking, you know, he's looking down. He's looking that way. Just such a yin-yang kind of a feeling with this. And I loved it. And then I do believe this also is this um, David Friedrich painting right here. Oh, I love this painting because the churning of the ocean in this. Okay. I'm going to try to get it to focus. The churning of the ocean in this is so powerful and such a three of wands, right? He's just like, wherever this ocean's gonna take me, wherever this current's gonna take me, I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna go with the flow, I'm gonna figure it out. You know, I'm gonna go with the rapid, so to speak. And I think that this was just a wonderful, and like I said, I think a couple of other decks that I've seen have this actual image for the three of wands because it's perfect for that, <laughs> okay? And then the four of wands is like, I think of the four of wands is like this, kind of like what like a celebration right but then what are they celebrating I kind of think of it in a celebration in stability because the fours are stable so it's like once you've gotten stable in your emotions that's a feeling of victory like once you have that but when I saw this image look at the irises look at the details in those irises and the vines like can I live here with the ocean behind me. I'm pretty sure I could find somewhere like this in Greece. <laughs> and then this beautiful, like she's sitting on this cheetah fabric. It's just so realistic. It's uncanny. Um, and the marble, like, anyway, I thought that with the structure right like this, with the, this, uh, it's almost like a portica shear almost, um, this pergola thing that's coming off. And with these pillars, I thought, okay, that looks like the four of wands. Now we can't see the other two pillars, but we know that they're there over here because of the symmetry of the card. And I thought, yeah, now the two figures even further cemented that it looked like the four of wands because they, they're like the figures in the card in the Rider Waite deck. So it was such a beautiful image. So the last wand is an is the eight of wands. Now we we there's no pictorial uh, rendition of the Rider Waite version. It's just like those eight wands, and they're whoo. Crowley calls this swiftness, right? It's the swiftness of opportunity, right? You just have to go with, you know, 
You have to go with your drive, go with your gut, and sometimes you have to go with it in a, in a quick way, right? So when I chose this image, this is very much like a demoness, okay? So is her horse with his red eyes. But they're very much in the sky, right? This could be Lilith. It does look like the Lilith figure from the devil card. But I thought that there was such swiftness in this that because she, because of the angle of her body, she just looks like any moment now I'm going to have to slide off of his back and just fall down to catch that opportunity. And I got that immediately, intuitively with this image. And I thought this is perfect for the... For the Eight of Wands. It's just lovely. I want to be her. <laughs> okay. Now, y'all, this is a sword suit. And there are a lot of cards in this. <laughs> um, more artful nudes in this section as well. But look at this. This Six of Swords. Usually we see the family going off in the boat, right? There's so much more to this painting. But I really wanted to capture the family in the boat. And how they're looking off, right? They're looking in this direction, but then the little child's looking back. So it's almost like you need to look back in an innocent way. Not in a, I'm going to take the past and do anything with it, but just know it's there. And then they are concentrating on the future. And it's kind of, to me, like in your thoughts, you know, don't let the past consume you. But concentrate on the future, but then still have a place for the present and the past. And I thought that that really, this, this project really helped me to dive with the tarot um, in a way that I could not foresee. So this is the Seven of Swords. Now we usually, in the Rider Waite, we see this figure running off with two swords, right? But look at her. And she's nude too. So I feel like there's a naivete with this move that this figure is making. Like... Like, I think we, I think when I first learned the tarot, I thought of this card as like deceitfulness, but I didn't want to think of it that way. I was like, well, what if he's doing it to better himself? Like, what if he has to do it to, to, to go, you know, what if he has to, to go somewhere to the benefit of himself? And maybe you have to get to the bare bones to do that also. So love that. I mean, look at her face. Love it. She's just almost like scared, but she knows she has to do it type of a type of a reaction. <laughs> now look at this. I didn't put these in order. Sorry. Look at this two of swords. Doesn't that just look like the two of swords right there? This beautiful liar player sitting there blind. Right? And almost like she can't play anymore because she's blind, but you don't really need to have sight to be able to play the instrument. And that's kind of what I get from that. And so it really did make me think of the two of swords with that, just that. Now with the three of swords, I picked a beautiful Demeter painting. And when I think of Demeter, I think of like the mother archetype, the mother aspect of, of it. But I think of of it in terms like when we think of it in terms of three you know it's like three thoughts three choices three hard choices when they pierce the heart I think these choices have to come from the heart so her three choices to me would probably be accepting that Persephone's gone okay and then accepting that she can only be up here a short time right and then accepting that she is the queen of the underworld within all of this. Like she's found herself at the beginning and she's kind of got to let go of her in a sense, like cut the cord. So it's like three aspects that have to come from the heart. And I got that with like, look at her pose. There's definitely some three of hearts energy right there. So, oh, I love this painting of Andromeda. Oh, and you know, She's chained to this rock, right? And this guard, uh, dragon is guarding her. And when we think of it, we th kind of think of um, someone being tied up, but then she really could get loose. And look at her chain. Like, look at that chain right there. It is very much a, 
Let's see if we can get it right. It's very much, she could take that off of her at any time. <laughs> she could pull that out of her face, right? Or up her body and then get away from it. But she's waiting to be saved, right? And it's like, you've got to save yourself, honey. Take that off. Get rid of the chain, get rid of the toga, and just get on the dragon and fly off. So this very much made me think of saving yourself. Don't, don't wait. Don't wait around to be saved. So I did want to show you this ace. Okay. I love the facial expression in this card. It just made me think of if this, if the swords had to have a, like a beginning and the all encompassing of what the swords mean to me, it would be her face. <laughs> like bar none, her beautiful expression of like almost melancholiness is exactly what I think of when I think of the sword suit. So, love it. And the last is the Queen of Swords, because we all know she's a freaking badass, right? And I think of her as an ice queen, but not in a, in a bad way, in a, uh, more in a, in a Joan of Arc way. So that's what I picked. I picked Joan of Arc for this, because look at the way the sword is on her mouth, kind of like when you draw a bow back and you put your fingers on your mouth, like when you pull the string back. And I feel like she's coming back to self before she makes that kill blow or before she strikes. And because she's able to do that, that makes her that badass. That makes her seem cold hearted. It makes her seem like she's just such an individualist, right? But the fact that she has the ability to come to self before killing or before making that final blow, that's what makes her the queen of swords right here. I love this. Rosetti image is just oh so Joan of Arc right love it okay like I said I've got the whole deck up here out of frame but I wanted to show you a little bit about my deck and that this is such a great project um, and it was for me and I still use the deck um, like a really it's just I named it I did the guidebook um, I came up, I tweaked the images. Like I said, this is my very first printing, but look at the, the font difference. The fonts are the same, but the size of the lettering is different. Um, like one is too small and one's too big. And so I have gone and tweaked the whole thing and, um, I've kind of tweaked it and it's just fun to go back on, you know, the website and, kind of dive a little bit more, see if, if in my mind the images have changed, if these are still like my renditions of what I, you know, in my brain. Um, I probably will do a Thoth version. I've done an Oracle version, uh, like I said, in my, on my face side, but I'll probably show that in another video. I just wanted to come on here and say a little bit about my own deck and I don't know. See if you wanted to do some kind of project. It is tedious. You do have to um, have kind of a business mindset. But it's so freeing, especially if you don't decide to do this for like, if you don't decide to do this for like marketing. Uh, look at that gilding. After five years, people. Ugh. And like I said, I wanted to show you the car talk too. Like, Super bendy. I think it's um, linen cardstock uh, that I, and they have some tiers that you can pick. Look how good it ripples. Shuffles. Oh, that sound. <laughs> I can't shuffle like the great Essany. She does it like sideways. But I am a bridge shuffler. And I'm so rough with the deck. Like, I just, I don't even care if I bend it. So let's pull a card and hopefully it won't be one that I have shown you. And that'll be kind of like your message for today. That's not really what my channel's about, but I'm feeling called to pull a card for you guys and for myself because I just get so excited working with the deck and I get excited to pull cards from it. Um, I don't work with it that often, but when I pull it out, I get so excited. I'm like, oh, I made this. 
So, okay, let's see. Oh, look, y'all have already seen that one. Let's embody her today. Let's stop and smell the roses, people. Okay, I hope this was fun, and I don't know. Maybe I'll come back and tell y'all a little bit more about the process itself. But for right now, I just wanted y'all to look at the card. You know, we'll go with, we'll do with it what we will, right? So much love.